Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Uh, we're smack in the middle of the F14 refinish and I got a little sidetracked. Uh, I pulled the canopy off because I knew I wanted to redo the cockpit. So that canopy ends up being the structural member for that hatch and so it got real floppy. So I figured I needed to finish that first before continuing on. Uh, but I wanted to use it as an opportunity to talk about a few things. I want to talk through CAD design, I want to talk through 3D printing and give you guys some ideas and kind of my philosophies there. Uh, I want to give you guys some painting tips on how to paint this stuff. Uh, but also, uh, I have the heads rigged up so they can be moved in uh, using one of my random servo motion generators. So I'm going to show you guys how to do a, a moving pilot head as well as a part of this video. I think that's it. First things first, let's pull up the CAD program and we'll run through some things there, show you the CAD models, uh, and then give you some ideas on some of the printing, uh, and then we'll go from there. So, let's go. All right, so first things first, I wanted to bring up the CAD model and just kind of give you guys a little idea. Um, so this is Rhino 3D. This is a program that uh, I've used for a little while. So this is a 3D surfacing program, uh, which is kind of the language that I speak when it comes to CAD drawing. Uh, and so I really like it a lot. I want to talk through the philosophy a little bit. So I've got um, the multi-views here. So, so ultimately to develop the cockpit parts for the F-14, I actually had a two-dimensional drawing that I already had that I had made um, back when I had helped design the F-14 kit for my folks at Jet Hangar. So I took that, that was my starting point, uh, and I basically just three-dimensionalized the whole thing. Okay, so when we, we zoom in here on the seat, you can see all of my kind of construction drawings or construction lines here. Uh, and so that's how I, those are all the profiles that I created uh, to make this three-dimensional part. Uh, so I didn't go too crazy with the detail, um, but I did want to make sure that I had some nice details like on the top of the seat, things that you would definitely see. But also, I knew that I was going to print this on an SLA printer, which is a liquid resin printer uh, that gets extremely fine detail. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, I, I did model some of the stuff that I knew that the printer would capture. Ultimately, you know, taking these two-dimensional profiles creating three-dimensional extrusions is really my approach uh, when I make something like this. Uh, and so when we look at the instrument panels here, um, it's the same kind of thing, right? So in this case, I had a two-dimensional drawing that I traced over, uh, and so then to create these three-dimensional parts. Uh, and you can see here, I have one of the the drawing still in here. And this is something I just found online. I, I simply just traced over it once I had all the 2D profiles done. And again, I just went through and three-dimensionalized it through extrusions and things like that. Anyway, so now we have a CAD model done. Next thing we need to do is we need to bring it into a slicer for whatever specific printer you're using. Uh, and so in this case, again, I wanted to use an SLA printer. An SLA is a liquid resin printer that uses UV light uh, to cure the different layers um, as it grows apart from this, this vat. And so let me open up the ejection seat here. And what you'll see is, all right, the orientation is a little bit different than you might be used to seeing for a regular FDM printer. Uh, and so the reason is that the way that the that liquid resin cures, is, I mean, you can really put this in any orientation whatsoever. Uh, but my primary motive here for orientation was these ejection pole cables uh, to make sure that they would form in a way that was rigid enough that uh, they wouldn't get squished if, um, as it built those parts in the vat. So the way that the SLA printer works, right, and, and actually if we were to do this right, this is how it comes out of the printer, just like this, all right, so it builds um, in, in this manner. The reason I go with the SLA and this kind of stuff is you don't get any striations in the parts whatsoever. It's like a, a resin cast or plastic model quality. Um, so yeah, let's get on to the painting and give you guys some pointers there, uh, and show you how to make that pilot head moving as well. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up. So 
So before we get into the painting of all of these parts, uh, we need to get the pilot head movement sorted out. Uh, and so I'm actually using a random servo motion generator, uh, and that's going to move both of the pilot heads independently and randomly uh, to each other. So it's going to be a really cool effect when it's all done. So I've got one of the pilots done here, uh, all painted up and ready to go. I've got a HS40 high-tech servo, uh, and we're just going to simply embed that into the back of the pilot. Now the, the pilots are 3D printed, uh, and so I printed them completely hollow. Uh, and the model actually came with a parachute on its back. So I cut that all off with a Dremel, uh, and so that really opened things up. I also had to do some custom fitting to get kind of the pilots to sit appropriately inside the cockpit as well. But that being said, we're still going to have to go in there, do some drumming so we can get the servo to really fit uh, and get it where it needs to be. Uh, let's show you how to do that real quick and then we can get onto the painting uh, and then finish up the cockpit. All right, so here is the servo. Uh, we need to obviously get this into the back of the pilot. Uh, the neck is through here, so we're going to have to open that all up. We're gonna have to open up the pilot head here. Uh, we're gonna insert a carbon shaft in there, uh, but otherwise this is gonna go in here like this, okay? So I'm gonna cut these tabs off and then we're just gonna ultimately glue that in. But uh, so let's get the drumling going uh, so we can custom fit this uh, and then that should uh, get us going pretty quick. All right, so we've got the servo into the pilot. Really simple, again, we just gotta clear away the space to get the servo in there. But then to set it, I actually, um, the pilot's head is mounted to a carbon push rod, and at the bottom of that, I glued the servo arm uh, onto it. So that way, um, that's how the head engages with the servo. Uh, but also to set the servo, I ran that through the, the pilot body, uh, got that all connected so that way I knew that uh, the servo would be set in the right place. Once I had that in there, uh, I glued it with some CA uh, just to hold it in place so it wouldn't move and then I used hot glue to kind of fill up the space uh, so that way the servo was nice and solid in there. Uh, and then once I had that set, mounted the head onto the arrow shaft. Uh, and that was pretty much it. It's all good to go. And so I've got both of these guys operating perfectly. Uh, and so now I think we can finish this up. It's time to get on to the painting. All right, guys, so it's time to paint. Uh, we've got all our parts done. They're printed. They're all good to go. I love to leverage spray paints as much as I possibly can uh, just because it makes things very easy. I don't have to use an airbrush or anything like that. So I have a whole rack of Tamiya AS spray cans. It's kind of a story how I got that. But <laughs> I always keep it stocked and I always look to those spray paints uh, whenever I start a project like this. So uh, the first things first, I've painted the cockpit tub. Uh, and so the color that I have in here is the Tamiya light gray AS18. Uh, it is actually pretty close to the federal standard number the, um, that's supposed to be in here, so happy with that. Uh, all around, I masked off and painted for the black areas, uh, and that's all based off of reference pictures. So I'm gonna spray paint as much as I can, uh, and then from there, everything else will be brush paints, and I've got model masters for that. I have a whole selection of that stuff. So let's get on to that.
All right, guys, so here we have uh, the finished cockpit. Uh, and I absolutely love how it came out. In, in terms of the painting itself, there's really no shortcuts here. I like to spray paint whatever base colors I can first. So I spray painted the, the pilot body's olive green. I spray painted the instrument panels gray. Uh, and then I spray painted the pilot heads or the helmets white. Uh, and then from there, it's all brush painting for all the details uh, in there. And using various different colors, you know, black for the bezels on the instrument panels. Uh, various colors of grays and greens on the pilots and then on the seats those were spray painted black and then all of the seat cushions and the details were were uh, brush painted olive green for the cushions and then you've got uh, the, the ejection pole handles that was all hand painted as well uh, with black and yellow and so yeah Again, there's no shortcut. You just got to go through the work and do it. If you find that you over paint in an area, you can come back, touch it up with the other color. I like to ensure that I've got all of the parts fully covered in paint. I don't want to see any of the under surface there. So I'll over paint areas and then come back and touch up where I need to. So in terms of the instruments, uh, I found some instrument panels online that I scaled to the right size and then printed out on a white laser printable vinyl. Uh, and so then using sharpened brass tubes and an X-Acto knife and straight edge, uh, I cut all of those out and placed them individually. For the side panels, those came out of my spares box. Uh, and so just did some detail painting on those. So once everything was painted, I like to do some dry brushing. So I'll take the colors that are applied, add some white into them, and then just dry brush all around. And what this does is it creates a used and weathered look, uh, but it also will lighten peaks on parts and things like that, it gives it a really nice look. So I highly recommend that um, in the process uh, because it helps break up an otherwise monotonous looking single color. To get the canvas look on the instrument panel hoods, I actually used gaffer's tape. This is a canvas kind of a tape. It has that canvas look to it. So I simply painted it, dry brushed it, and then applied it onto the desired areas in the cockpit. And it actually gives a really good look, real authentic looking. To finish it all up, I cut out a clear glass HUD panel uh, instead of the, the painted green one that's in the kit. So once all of the components were painted, everything was glued into it. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that is pretty much it. Now, again, there's no shortcuts on this. You got to put in the work, but the work is always worth it in the end. Uh, and so, yeah, stoked how this came out. We got the moving heads on the pilots. Uh, we've got a really authentic looking cockpit. Uh, and so it's only going to add to uh, the looks of the, the awesome F-14. And I'm really looking forward to getting to painting on this model. Uh, and so hopefully we'll cover that next. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to follow along on social media at The RC Geek. Subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you at the field.